Good evening and welcome as we share in this different service of Maundy Thursday. I want to explain how this service will go before we begin. What we're going to be doing is we've already taken the time to strip the altar. We have already taken the time to set up the elements of what is a part of the foot washing. But this year we cannot wash feet. This year we cannot share in communion, not in the physical way. So instead we are going to reflect on those elements. We're going to reflect on the parts of everything to do with this worship as we gather together in prayer so that we may be reminded in prayer and in faith what they mean to us and how they are a part of this important service in part of the church year. So tonight, as we gather for this worship, we are invited to keep in prayer each other and to keep in mind those things and that are all a part of this service and what they mean. So tonight, as we lead you in this worship, it will be taken from the Book of Alternative Service, and it begins on page 304, and we will do so. Uh, when we end this worship together, we will be ending, as we always have, with the Psalm 22, the reading of it responsibly between myself and Reverend Owen. And as we do, we are going to ask you to reflect on the emptiness of the altar and the space around it as we reflect on this time of year, as we approach the cross without any fanfare, without any dressings, but with the stark reality of what Christ has done for us. So we're going to begin our worship together. This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed his disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us his holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Our Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year whole male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall, shout, shall slaughter it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, Generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our song for this evening is Psalm number 116, found on page 864 in your Book of Alternative Services. We're going to read verses 1 and 2 and 10 to 17 responsibly with the prayer at the end. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death tangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Eternal God, faithful in your tender compassion, you give us hope for our life here and hereafter through the victory of your only Son. When we share his cup of salvation, revive in us the joy of this everlasting gift. We ask this in his name. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Corinthians chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup after, also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do, do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his home who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, Gave, got up from the table, took off his outer roll, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed, bathed, does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, 
And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. And after, the, after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for that, is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know this, these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Lord, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. If I give you a new commandment, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God comes not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to come forward by faith, by prayer, and right where you are, that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. But come in prayer, remembering his admonition, that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are this you. This has been a difficult, different, and interesting way to conduct Maundy Thursday this year. It's so odd to not be able to face our people in church, in our worship space, is difficult to think about all of us not being able to come together. It's difficult thinking about not actively taking part in the same motions, the same actions, the same gestures, the same physical things that we do each time that we come together for this special time this special time of year, this momentous service. Even though for many, it can be a bit awkward. For some, it is a moment where they reflect, just as I do, on the very words I just said. They reflect on how they are a servant, how the Lord has been a servant to them, how they in turn have been as the Lord commanded to others. For as many of you know, that is the purpose of even the name of this special Thursday in the year. 
It's called Maundy Thursday for a special reason, one that I've said before. It comes from the Latin, mundatum, part of a whole sentence which goes, and forgive my pronunciation, mundatum novus du vobis, ut delegatis in vicem sicut delexi vos, which basically translates to, I give you a new commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Verse 34 from our Gospel reading tonight. This is Commandment Thursday, a new commandment, one that we recall in this very act that we are forbidden to do this year. This act of touch, this act of washing. Just as he says in verses 14 to 17, when he, just after he instructs the disciples as to why he is washing their feet, he says, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. And if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. This command is all part of this intimate moment where we share in the washing of feet. Tonight, where I cannot do these things, where we cannot partake in reflecting on how the foot washing affects us, how we cannot reflect upon it in person, at least. I invite you to reflect on the elements of it and how each part of what we do is so important and speaks to why we do it. The first element I wish to reflect on with you is the basin, the bowl, that which the water was poured into, that which their feet was laid into, that which he used to wash their feet. This is always the awkward part when people come forward to have their feet washed. Many do so with great fervor, excitement, remembering that this is all part of a great action, a great blessing, another piece of the many things that we do, an outward and visible sign of that grace that God can only give. To some it's a little giggly, it's a little funny. I once washed the feet of a child and they laughed the whole time and my heart soared. But in that moment, we recall what Jesus said. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Now, for many of us, we think, well, it's reflective of baptism. Surely it is. It is reflective of just the act of servanthood to draw himself so low to make sure that the feet of his chosen messengers are ready. For as it is written, blessed are those feet. But he was also quick to say it's not about baths. It's not about bathing. It's not about washing you clean of sin. This is not what this is. This gesture was tender. Was caring. Was loving. It recognizes that it is not about cleaning oneself. Not like baptism where we have all the previous sin or the previous moments of error or grief or doubt, all of that washed away. In this case, it was an act of love. But something else as well. The Reverend Canon Martha Tarternick, Tarternick 
who is the rector of St. George's Anglican Church in St. Catharines, Ontario, she wrote an article recently, and I want to reflect on one little thing she said. This year, she writes, there will be no foot washing. There will be no gathering, no Eucharist, no physical connection to the body parts of others. And yet, because of these protocols, these are, in, are not in contrast to the truth of our faith. They are utterly and completely in line with Jesus' teachings that he wanted his followers to know. In the foot washing, and she adds in the bread breaking, Jesus completely and utterly dismantles the myth that human beings can ever live solely for themselves. She goes on to say, even as we're being called to stay home, to be alone, to observe physical distance and to refrain from physical touch, our awareness of how completely and totally intertwined we really are has never been more clear. We can't be together right now because we are connected. It's an amazing thought. The fact that we are all so intertwined as humanity, as people on this earth, as God's people in his church. We are intertwined so much right down to the cells and molecules. None of us, nothing that we do right now is only about ourselves, even when we think it is. For all of us to be saved, spiritually and health-wise we are in this together and that is a wonderful thought that she shares and it's in this moment looking at the basin remembering the moment during worship when i would be holding your feet or when other clergy would be washing them there's a wonderful connection that is formed, a reminder how much we are drawn together in this place, in Christ. In the same way we have the towel. It seems a simple and obvious second item to focus on. For once you are clean and washed, you must be dried and made warm and comfortable again. But that's not all it is. This is another act of generosity, of kindness, of love. For in drying off afterwards, of washing you clean and then drying you, you're completing the action. In many of our garb that we wear as part of the Eucharist, and as part of everything we do in worship, one of the symbols is a small a piece of vestment that we wear over our arm. It's called the maniple. We wear our stole to represent our, uh, pl our place as deacon or priest. The chasuble, the large cloak I wear over that is always colored in the same color of the season of the church is used uh, for the time that we have and share in communion. In Eucharist but underneath there there's a small vestment that you can wear a small stole for one's arm and that small vestment is symbolic of this very towel the symbol of servanthood the reminder each and every time that I approach the table the altar to be a part of worship, to be a part of Eucharist, to be a part of the whole story that is told this time of year, where Christ gives us this commandment and shares with us not only his command to servanthood, but also his whole self, that we too must give of ourselves. And it's in this small symbol, one that many would never see, and very often we don't use anymore. It reminds me of this moment, and it can remind you too. 
in any moment where you have a cloth or towel to to dry off yourself your child to clean up a mess it's a reminder that not only we are servants even to each other to take care of each other but that we are there in both the moments where we are clean and when we are not and yet still this is a symbol of help finally we have the seat the chair now this seems a bit redundant or unimportant as of course you must sit down to have your feet washed you must be able to lift your feet you must be able to be able to recline so someone can do it but it's bigger than that too to be able to take a seat to be comfortable enough to be taken off guard once we are taken off our feet we are left vulnerable whether it be that we are seated whether it be that we are reclining lying down kneeling we are no longer standing ready standing is to act standing is to be prepared to stand is to have action even when it is only potentially something that could happen to be prepared once you sit doesn't matter how prepared you are you instantly become more relaxed you instantly lose some defense you can be at the whims of another person It is the first thing that we do, and it's the last thing I'm reflecting on. Because it is from this seat we rise. We rise after being washed, after being cared for, after being made once again a servant, a reminder of servanthood, to be renewed in the commandment that Christ gives this night. We stand renewed invigorated clean made whole reminded that we are indeed called to do this to others as we step away from this seat we step towards another person we step towards the world around us we step back into that which Christ has called us to go to go out and to do the same I invite you therefore now reflecting on the commandment reflecting on the purpose of this night reflecting even on the fact that we must do it apart and yet we do it together that we remind ourselves with these symbols and what they mean exactly what this night is about what it is for and to remind us whose servant I am if I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet you also ought to wash one another's feet for I have given you an example that you do as I have done to you most assuredly I say to you a servant is not greater than his master nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him if you know these things blessed are you if you do them Our intercessions uh, are found on page 116, number 7. Page 116. Let us pray in faith to God our Father, 
to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. Lord, hear and have mercy. For the Church of the living God throughout the world, let us ask the riches of his grace. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who proclaim the word of truth, let us, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the Prime Minister of Canada, for the Premier of this province of Newfoundland, and for all Premiers, and for all who govern the nations, that they may strive for justice and peace, let us ask the strength of God. Lord, hear and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, that their studies may be benefit humanity. And especially at this time, we think of the coronavirus and for those who are seeking a, a cure for that, we just pray that God will be with them. Let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. And for all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. And we say together the colic on page 304 at the bottom. O God, your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, has, has left to us the meal of bread and wine in which we share his body, his body and blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior, Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and they wag their heads, saying, he trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb, and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. 
be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in. And gangs of evil doers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and they cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry, to him he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. 